everyone, it's Shell C with Stencil Girl Creative Team, and I am doing a, a art piece in a pastiche style. What does that mean? Pastiche means to imitate another artist, whether it's uh, visual art, music, architecture, uh, drama, imitate another artist's style in a complimentary way. Not to mock them, but to compliment their style by using it. And because most of the team will probably be doing famous artists, Peg Robinson and I decided to copy each other. So the first thing I did to try to imitate Peg's style is to pick a color palette because that's how I work. I start with color. I wanted to make some gel prints because I am a collage artist, a mixed media collage artist. I wanted to start with some gel prints using Stencil Girl stencils and colors of acrylic paint that Peg would use. The colors I picked were Naples Yellow Red Light, Prussian Blue Thallow, and Burnt Umber, umber in the Amsterdam uh, Expert acrylics. And then the Deco Art Fluid acrylics, I used Green Gold, Cobalt Turquoise Hue, Titan Buff, Cobalt Teal Hue, and then I use some copper. And I am doing some different techniques. Uh, Peg likes grunge. She likes um, a lot of visual texture in her art. So I started out doing a technique using some baby powder where I layer on baby powder with different layers of paint and then pick them off the plate. That's the first thing I did, and then I thought I would want to layer some of the stencil designs over these grungy backgrounds. The first stencil I decided to use is, I think, Peg's very favorite stencil. Also one of my very, very favorites. This one is called Stone and Mortar 2, designed by Mary Beth Shaw. And this is the 6x6 version. You can also get this type of design in the 9x12 and even in the little ATC size stencils that Mary Beth has, has created. It's just interesting stacked um, irregular rectangles, which make such an impact. It's a really great stencil. Love it, love it, love it. So I am making some prints with that by layering color through the stencil. Um, picking up color through the stencil, doing some different techniques, which you guys can watch. Uh, I have lots of videos of gel printing and how I like to do it. Still using these same colors, alternating with the fluid paints and the more thick paints, more heavy body paints. And of course, I'm using a six by six gel plate and a two inch brayer to do this. This next stencil is called Unfinished and it was designed by Seth Apter, who's a really cool artist uh, who lives in New York City. And I know that Peg loves Seth Apter. She's taking classes with him and she loves his style. So I decided to use this one. This was a nine by 12, but he, he again also has six by six and even ATC size stencils with the, his very unique graphic style interesting uh, prints with it, with these. Um, you know, just I'm just making some great grungy prints with the right colors to to pick up what Peg would be laying down. <laughs> some of them were on rice paper. That last one was on rice paper. Some of them were on regular printer paper. And of course, using some of this grungification using the baby powder in between. I also uh, decided to use copper metallic. I know that Peg likes a shimmer and she enjoys not so much glittery, but shimmery. So copper is a really great metallic to go along with these, this color palette that I picked. I'm also doing some of the prints on black text weight paper because Peg does that a lot. I see her do that a lot. So that's what I'm doing. Um, Here's some Prussian blue in combination with that quinacridone gold. You know, you just can't go wrong with quinacridone gold. It's a great color to go with anything. It really is. Again, with the black paper. So what I plan to do is uh, do an interesting collage background to start my piece. And that's the reason I'm making so many prints. 
I had way leftover prints, tons of them left over, and I've been using them for other projects. I am doing the 100 Days project. So I've been making lots of little mixed media collage pieces, and you may have seen some of these prints come up in some other pieces that I've done. <laughs> you know, I keep using them until they're gone. So this stencil is from Stencil Club. If you don't know about Stencil Club, it's a really great, fun thing to do. It is $25 a month and a little bit more if you don't live in the United States, but you can do it if you don't live in the United States. And every month you receive a 9x12, a 6x6, and a 4x4 exclusive stencil that you can't get any other way but besides club. So this is the 9x12 stencil from the September 2020 club designed by Ray Missigman called Modern Botanicals. Then I went back to the brick and mortar uh, stencil again. I sometimes like to print over my roll off paper where I've rolled off my excess and it makes really interesting prints just doing that. So I do that as well. I'm also applying some paint using a scraper. Um, it's just, you know, making interesting grungy prints just like pegwood that I want to use in my project. This one's on rice paper again. Sometimes you end up with some leftover paint and you can do a second print by uh, putting on a thin layer, another thin layer of acrylic and picking up what's left on the plate, which is what I did with this one. And I have lots of prints. I don't think I even showed them all in the video. So lots of browns and teals and green gold and yeah just lovely stuff look at all those beautiful prints <laughs> you just can't go wrong with that pile right not my palette but I'm not doing me I'm doing peg so I think I'm doing a pretty good job so now I have a five by seven canvas panel and I'm going to collage my prints um, in pieces onto this panel using some Liquitex matte gel medium and a wide collage brush that's made by uh, Distress Ranger, Tim Holtz. And I am tearing them uh, into rectangles and squares and just kind of laying them on in sort of a tile way by using a metal ruler to tear them. It makes it easier. And you don't get a cut edge, you get a tear edge, which is, is nicer. Sometimes I tear by hand, sometimes I want them more straight, so I tear with the ruler. And then I get out my glue. I like to put the matte medium on the canvas and also on the back of the paper. These are lightweight papers. There isn't any cardstock weight or anything like that, but I still just think that I get a better, better adhesion and also uh, less bubbles if I put the medium on the canvas as well as the back of the paper. You know, canvas has a texture and sometimes you can get some bubbles in there. I also go over the top of the paper with the brush to make sure that, it, that everything is smoothed down and uh, really pressed down to the canvas. This canvas panel is easier to work on than a wrapped canvas because it is flat. It has like a cardboard backing instead of um, being wrapped around a frame where you get that kind of squishiness in the middle. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you can absolutely do mixed media collage on a wrapped canvas as well. Or a wooden cradled panel is really nice. Um, they're so easy to hang because they're like a frame, but then instead of having canvas over it, it's got a piece of wood over it over the top. And those are really great for collage. I like to use those, but I, I bought a large package of these small canvases to use for my 100 days project for all my mixed media collage. So I bought a student pack, 72 of them. So that's what I'm using today. So I'm continuing to layer different pieces, tearing different pieces off of the different gel prints that I had. I just love the grungy look of them um, using the powder and also uh, using different methods to apply the paint like the scraper just makes them look really patchy and interesting with the stencil designs on and I wanted to do a little bit of unification so that it doesn't look so much like tiles and so I did take the, the modern botanicals 
uh, stencil again with a little bit of mixture of green gold and uh, Titan buff. And I also wiped that back with a baby wipe as I was going. So it, it just looks more unified if you add a stencil design over the, the whole thing after you've put all these disparate pieces together. But of course, it's also pretty unified because of the colors. The color palette is all very similar. So that worked out. The next thing I wanted to use a some type of a motif that that Peg would use. And I looked through her Instagram and I saw that she often does a fern design. A lot of her pieces on Instagram have this this type of a design. So I took one of the prints a dark one it's um, got a lot of, of that Prussian blue and teal in it and I drew the fir a fern design on the back and then cut it out fussy cut it with my scissors and I'm going to attach that over the top of my background using that same glue Liquitex matte gel medium which is my favorite everyone has their favorite this is mine <laughs> so instead of trying to um, because this cutout piece was so floppy, instead of trying to put the, the glue on the back of it and, and flip it over and stick it down and all that, I decided to just apply the glue in sections, moving from the bottom stem all the way up the leaves by flipping them back and then putting the glue on the canvas background and then um, putting that section down and going over the top of it with my brush making sure that there's lots of medium on there and and going over with my finger to make sure there's no bubbles to get it all stuck down really nicely and that worked out really well then i decided that i needed to lighten up the background behind the, the stem and leaves because the color was too matchy matchy it was blending in too much and i, I couldn't see it and so i decided the way to do that is to first take a brush and this is that color called Naples yellow red light it's an interesting color it's not yellow it's not red it's kind of peach but in a very Titan buff sort of way <laughs> it's a pretty cool color I'm not sure peachy peachy I don't know what you what you would say about it but I'm using a small round brush to to fill in and then but I don't want it to be solid. I'm making sure that I use my finger and even in some cases you'll see that I use the baby wipe to to cling, cling back the lightness of it. I don't want it to be stark. I don't want to completely cover the background. I still want some of that stencil pattern to show through. So uh, this is something that I like to do sometimes. I like to paint around things like this. <laughs> It's a little bit fussy, but it works It works out for exactly what I want. I do plan to add some more color um, over the top of this, so I, I didn't want it to be overpowering and very, very light. I just needed to lighten it up a little bit. And you could leave it like that if you wanted to. I didn't want to. I had another plan. Um, one thing that Peg really enjoys using is alcohol ink. And I thought, how could I incorporate some alcohol ink? one of Peg's go-to's uh, into this project. And so I, I got out some uh, Ranger Adirondack um, alcohol inks. I believe the colors I used were tangerine, lettuce, and butterscotch. I also got out a little tub of alcohol and a tiny mister bottle that was filled up with alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol, not food grade alcohol. I think I'm using the 91% because I didn't have any of the 97%, which I usually use, but that's kind of been missing in the stores since the pandemic started. I think people probably purchased all of it in order to uh, stay clean and sanitary, which was probably a smart thing to do, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> so I am using the combination of dipping my brush in the alcohol in the, the container and um, moving the alcohol ink around with that. Also uh, using the brush directly in a drip of alcohol ink if I want it to be more strong. And I even did spritz it some at some point with the little Mr. Bottle and alcohol to get it to move. 
Alcohol ink is usually translucent with the exception of like the metallic ones that have the mica in them. Those aren't as translucent. So mixatives and those uh, other ones that, that came out with the metallic. But all the rest of them are by nature translucent. So I'm getting a mixture of color by adding a few different colors and then blending it out with the alcohol as if it was kind of like a watercolor. I also used the brush to splatter a little bit just you know to, to grungify even more splatters are always awesome I like to use them and then I did some drips from the top using that lettuce color or maybe I did them from the bottom I can't remember anyway I did a few drips I spritzed it with the alcohol and let it drip down uh, just because it's interesting it, it makes more interesting pattern I like it I like to do that Dripping is nice, spattering is nice, all those things are things that Peg would do, so um, I'm doing them too. <laughs> so I decided to add some sketchy highlights to the leaf, fern, branch, whatever it is, just because I just think it will make it stand out a little bit more again, make it more interesting, and so I'm using a fine tip white Posca pen. This is an is an acrylic paint pen, and I did dry this in between with a heat tool in order to make sure that I didn't ruin my pen. And then this one that I'm putting on is actually a Pentel color brush with a sepia toned um, water based ink in it. I will be sealing this, and I did seal it with three coats of. Um, matte UV protectant spray varnish after everything was done. So I'm not too concerned about putting in the water based stuff in there because I, I'm just, I give it very light sprays so it's not going to run or anything. It'll be sealed. And I'm also blending that out with a water brush and just adding just a tiny bit more darkness around things. And some more splatters. Yay! <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this video as I as I imitate Peg Robinson, my friend and colleague that I work with a lot. And I, I think that if you go look at her Instagram, you will see that this really it does look like something she would have made. The last thing I did was to put a word on using that unfinished stencil that was designed by Seth Apter. And the word is change. I think that growing and changing um, are kind of almost synonyms, growing and changing. And of course, this is a branch that's growing and stretching itself. And so I thought the word change was perfect for this. And it's kind of a theme for me right now. I'm, I'm uh, growing and changing myself. So... I thought that was perfect. I went around it a little bit with that same uh, pencil color brush and then I went around the outside of the whole thing using some Distress ink in walnut stain, another favorite product of Peg's. I thought I still I needed a little bit more teal. I thought it just needed a little bit more teal. So the very last thing I did was to use some of that fluid acrylic in cobalt teal and just go just lightly very very quickly and lightly go over the leaves a little bit so that's it for me for the stencil girl creative team this month don't forget to like comment subscribe share all those things and that's it for me thanks bye bye